A big hello to you. It's so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk welcoming you up here to Weir Yard and today we've got an extra special review thanks to the generosity of Monday Clubber Bo Minnick. Now Bo contacted me a little while back and offered to send over a Rapido locomotive and uh, they're based over in the US so I did wonder what it might be and uh, when it did eventually arrive it turned out to be the 16XX Pannier tank which was a special commission for Model Rail magazine and this is exceptionally generous of Bowmanic and it's given both myself and you guys an opportunity to take a closer look at this specially commissioned Rapido locomotive, which I must admit was on my radar, but just one thing led to another, and I'd never got round to getting one. So thank you, Bo Minnick, you've uh, made my day, and uh, I'm gonna really enjoy exploring this one with you guys. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, Find the full range available to buy today at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. So come with me and thanks to the generosity of Bo Minnick. We're going to take a good close look at the 16XX Pannier tank from Rapido Trains. I'd like to thank Bo Minnick for their incredible generosity in sending this Rapido Train 16XX into the channel. And uh, this is certainly a well-travelled model because uh, Bo Minnick is based in the US. So this has actually been bought from the UK, shipped over to the US, and then very, very kindly donated to the channel and shipped all the way back, putting it through the rigmarole of Royal Mail's customs, uh, which meant that this got delayed by quite a long time, but it all got sorted out in the end. And it's certainly a model that interests me a lot because I'd not actually seen one of these in the flesh before. Now I do have the J70 that Model Rail commissioned from Rapido, and this was the follow-up model to that. And the J70 really is a lovely model so I've got really high hopes for this. It comes in quite a, an oversized box, it's quite large and it's um, a very very strong box, very uh, reminiscent of the ones that both Hellion and Daypol use as well. Now uh, the catalogue number on the end we've got MR-310B and this is quite an interesting liveried one. This is number 1638 in Dart Valley Green. And this is actually one of the preserved examples that is at the Dart Valley. And this shows it in the livery that it ran there in. What's interesting is on the side of the box, we've got a little bit of detail on the prototype. And it's quite interesting that um, whilst they do look like quite an old fashioned design, it was actually a uh, post-war replacement for the 2021 Pannier tanks of 1901. These were built in three batches between 1949 and 1955, which actually means that these are very firmly a BR locomotive, although from the drawing board that had produced many a great Western outline locomotive. Number 1628 was the last 16XX in BR service and was withdrawn in September 1966 and uh, has survived and is currently, at the time of filming this, based at the Kent and East Sussex Railway. Now, I've actually already had this out of the box because it was too much fun to not play with it, but uh, I will just show you, you get a nice little booklet, um, which again, we've got uh, that uh, prototype history and uh, some detailing 
uh, about operation, maintenance, and interestingly enough as well, we've got all the details for the DCC fitting, and I'll be showing you how to do that later on using the Trainomatic Next18 decoders, and we do have a link for them as well in the description box to help you find them. And these are, as you can see, quite small, um, and uh, that's one of the micro six pins next to it, but we won't be using that in this video. Some of the livery options, quite interesting. We've got uh, GWR livery, even though these were a post GWR build. And the uh, Busby uh, Spark Arrest chimney was also provided as an option as well. Although I always think these look a little bit odd, although they have seemed to be quite popular. And the exploded diagram, which shows just how much goes into one of these precision models. Now, uh, inside the box, plenty of foam, and I've already taken it out of the box, but I am going to show you the detailing pack, which comes in here. And uh, you can see there, we've got the fire iron, we've got a shovel here, and then also some buffer beam detailing, which you can add if you wish. And it's nice that they provide this. Now, the locomotive itself, I have already had running on the layout. It's got quite a weight to it. That was the first thing that struck me, that when you uh, weigh this up in your hand, it is significantly heavier than uh, similar pannier tanks such as the 57XX, which uh, has been produced by Bankman over the years, and certainly one which I'm quite used to here on Weir Yard. I've got a number of them. This livery is done in the style of the Great Western with the GWR green and Dark Valley written on the tank sides, but in the same font and the same drop shadowing as the Great Western livery would have been. So uh, at first glance, actually, it's easy to just catch it out the corner of your eye and assume it's a Great Western Railway livery locomotive, when in fact, this is very firmly in the preservation era. The rest of the model has got a lot of fine detail. And what's interesting, and we'll see more of this when I take it apart, is that there is a lot of die-cast metal in this. And it's something that uh, Rapido don't generally make a big song and dance about, but their models just come naturally with plenty of die-cast metal in, providing a lot of adhesive weight, which improves both the pickups for the electric from the wheels, and also the grip for pulling prototypical length trains. The cab itself does have a lot of detail inside, a little bit difficult to show you in this light, but in the close-up photographs, I've got every confidence that the cupboard monkey will do us proud. Uh, but the cab roof itself doesn't appear to come clear. So uh, certainly it's something that you can't normally see a lot of, but uh, in true Rapido style, you just know that detail is there. The rest of the model has uh, some interesting uh, detailing. We've got a lot of pipe work there underneath these uh, characteristic pannier tanks. And there is a rendition of the motion deep down inside the darkness there. And there is actually daylight that uh, at certain angles you can just about make out all the way underneath, just as per the prototype. And the curvature of the boiler along the underside is also perfectly visible. All the buffers are sprung, and actually it's um, it's not a weak spring, it's uh, actually quite a, a good quality spring back that you can feel on these turned metal buffer heads, and that does mean that if you want to use uh, three link type couplings, then this will actually run as per the prototype quite nicely. Looking to the top of the tank, one of the things that struck me is you don't see the outline of the very top of the boiler down the center. It's something which I'd grown used to with other types of panniers. But on this, the top of the tanks is just clean all the way across. So we get a very flat top to the pannier tank, which gives these quite a distinctive look. We've also got the moulded on representation of the roof hatch, but it is just a moulding. And I have to say that it does look a little 
bit odd and not quite up to the standard of detailing on the rest of the locomotive. I'm guessing we have been spoilt with uh, locomotives with um, much more relief on these that actually slide open and shut. A little bit of a gimmick maybe, but uh, it would also allow a good view down into the cab, which is a secondary purpose of these. The bunker comes out of the box with its rendition of the coal load, but we don't get that little hump in the middle where the coal is slumping uh, where it's been dug out, as we saw with the 16-inch Hunslet model, which is a more recent uh, Rapido release. The vacuum pipes come factory fitted, and we've also got some additional pipe work sticking out here, and I can only assume that might actually be uh, something to do with uh, running with an auto coach, uh, but I'm not 100% sure about that. The front face of the locomotive is captured well, and again, interestingly, the full front of the tanks on the locomotive are painted black, not just the smoke box door and immediate surround. Handrails are all wire metal and do seem to be quite durable, although this one on the cab side did push in a little bit just with light handling, but it didn't break and that's the main thing. The printing of the number 1638 is crisp and sharp and that is just a printing. It's not an etched plate, but actually it does look really good. And a close-up as well on that lettering is really quite superb. The shape of the side rods too has been captured really well. And you can see the way that they fatten up in the middle and then go thin again back towards where they uh, connect to the next wheel. The wheels themselves are again die-cast metal, good and solid. They're painted in black and certainly incredibly well done. We also have brake rigging fitted out of the box in full and uh, these side steps are pretty robust. Again, this is an area where I've had so many locomotives in the past from other manufacturers where the first thing to fall off are the uh, steps on the side because they're only held on by a bit of glue, usually plastic to metal, and they don't last on this. They do seem to be pretty resilient. Looking to the underside, we've got the maker's mark hidden away in the middle and uh, some uh, uh, access points there just for maintenance to oil the gears if you so need it. Pickup appears to be off all six wheels, but it's got an interesting setup. There's no wipers that I can see on the backs of the wheels and it appears to be picking up from the wheel centers off the uh, uh, axle itself. It's quite an interesting drive mechanism, which does mean that we've not got wipers to adjust. And certainly on this locomotive, it's run out of the box absolutely perfectly without any real issues to do with stalling. So whatever system they've got on there does work really well. On the back of the tender, we've got these lamp irons, again, separately fitted parts. Although the extreme back of the tender it is a separate part and that gap between the two is just a little bit more pronounced perhaps than uh, I would like to have seen it. I can see daylight just a little bit through the sides, but again, it's not really a huge problem. The bars on the back windows of the cab, these are all metal inserts and they really are nicely done and quite robust as well. The safety valve bonnet is, uh, it feels like it's metal and it's got that slightly dulled brass finish which does make it, in my view, look a lot better than shiny painted plastic. The dome is to the correct shape with the nipple on the top and uh, the rest of the fittings on what is actually quite a spartan and flat top to this are picked out well. These two water fillers also serve a dual purpose and when we come to DCC fit this I will show you how. We've got tension lock coupling slimline type in NEM pockets front and back and if you want to remove these either to replace them with another form of coupling or to use something like a three link altogether the mounting points are convenient they are NMRA standard and uh, if you remove the actual couplings and pockets they don't really stand out too much at all. The drawbar hooks are metal 
and actually would be perfectly usable if you wanted to use them for their prototypical purpose. Glazing on the cab appears to be flush and those characteristic sad eyes of those windows are captured perfectly. On DC, the model runs really, really well. Straight out of the box, there was no real need for running in, and the firebox flicker effect came on from a very low voltage, which does make it very, very usable. Although DC users may find that the fact that it's on all the time could become just a little bit irksome. When it comes to DCC fitting, this model is really easy to do. And we're going to be using the Trainomatic Next18 decoder, which is pretty small and does have the solder pads if you wish to add a smart power pack to this. The only tool you're going to need for this is a small crosshead or Phillips style jeweler's screwdriver. First up, we've got two screws. These are at the back. You'll find them just behind the buffers. So I unscrew one and the second one too. The next two screws are hidden away just underneath these filler caps and these can very carefully be rocked free just using fingernail and the plastic covers just come off again on the other side just rock that free and then you'll see hiding underneath quite cleverly these two screws. We just go in, again, unscrew one, and when you're putting them next to the other screws, you'll notice that the ones from the top are longer than the ones from the bottom. And there's the second one. And then it's simply a case, rocking the body and lifting it free. One of the things that I want to show you whilst this is off is that all of this is a metal casting. There's a lot of weight in this. And this gives the opportunity to have quite a reasonable amount of space within the top of the pannier. You can also see that the speaker is hidden quite nicely in the bunker area, so would not be visible even if you shone a light into the cab. And you can also see all of that back head detail really, really well inside there. Inside the model, you'll see the base of the cab. We've also got a factory fitted speaker here as well, which hides away underneath the bunker. And that is a really great feature if you want to fit this with sound. You can also see that firebox flicker. And one of the things that I liked about this is that it was possible to see the red glow underneath as well when it's operating. And I felt that that gave it just that little bit of an extra dimension. The motor itself is hidden away underneath this uh, chassis casting block. And then the circuit board at the front, you can see the next 18 socket. With the blanking plate taken away, just simply a case of put a nail under the front and lever it out. It's a really simple task now to take our next 18 decoder and then make sure that we orientate the next 18 socket and then carefully line it up and you'll feel it click into place. And you can see that the next 18 decoder from Trainomatic is actually really, really small. If you had a much bigger, say, sound decoder, that would also fit within this space quite well. This is also a perfect opportunity to add yourself a crew in place. Once we've got that in, it really is a simple task of just sliding the locomotive body back on, and you'll feel that it goes on with no resistance whatsoever. You shouldn't need to force it. If you are forcing it, then do check to make sure you haven't got a wire trapped somewhere, particularly just underneath where these screw in. It's then simply a case of reversing the process. The longer screws go into the tops of the tanks and then add back in the little filler caps. These again are just a push fit, making sure to orientate them the same way round that they came off. The final two screws underneath by the rear buffer beam and there our DCC fitting of this model is complete. As shown with the top off there is a factory fitted speaker so a sound fitted option really couldn't be easier.
When it comes to running, the model performed faultlessly first off on DC, and then later on, once it was DCC fitted, on the DCC track here on Weir Yard. I had it running on the torture test track, and it took in radius 1 curves and the undulations without even breaking a sweat. The superior mass of this locomotive made sure that it got good electrical continuity as well as was able to haul a reasonable length train up a somewhat challenging 5% grade. The firebox flicker effect was particularly pleasing, operated off the F3 key on the control pad and could be turned on and off at will either when the locomotive was running or when stationary, and as said during the DCC fitting, I really really like the way that it shines downwards, just visible around the firebox area, just like you might find with the glow from a real locomotive's firebox. All in all, the performance was more than satisfactory, with only a slightest hint of a stutter when running in the forward direction on one particular insel frog point, although when running in reverse, the locomotive was not so affected. All in all, a pretty good performer, and it really did feel smooth on the track, and when running it, it did have this air of effortless to it, even without any need for fitting a Stay Alive or Smart Power Pack. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and overall, I thought that this was a pretty well put together model. We've got a lot of factory fitted detailing, including all of that brake gear underneath, and a lot of the pipework fitted too, with the only user fittable parts being the tools for the fire rake and shovel, which would normally be strung along the back of the tender on these hooks, and the chains for going onto the drawbar hooks, which are very much only able to be fitted if you remove the slimline tension lock. One area which I felt the model could have been improved is this little gap here on the back of the bunker. There's a separate piece and as noted in the review, it doesn't appear to quite fit as it should, almost as if the coal insert is marginally too big and is pushing it back. It's not insecure, it's not going to fall off, but that gap is noticeable under close inspection. The other area where the model did suffer slightly was that this handrail pushed into the cab side and has proven a little bit difficult to get back out. Again, it's not broken, but it's just a little something that came to light during the review. So I'm going to give this a 9.3. On running quality, as said before, the model performed almost faultlessly on the torture test track, which takes in some really severe gradients both up and down, with transitions between the gradients and a number of different insel frog and electrofrog points. The model also took in the radius 1 curves, and there was no sign of any derailments or stuttering other than one particular insel frog point, and there was a slight stutter, although not enough to cause the locomotive to stop completely when running at a prototypical pace. And again, it only happened in the forwards direction. When running in reverse, the locomotive was not so affected. Although, without having wiper pickups, there doesn't appear to be anything for the user to actually adjust to be in a position to address that. So, again, it's not something that I could see a way of fixing outright. So I'm going to give this a 9.9. .9. On DCC fitting and innovation, well DCC fitting on this model is ridiculously easy. Just those four screws and the body really does come off quite easily in one piece. There's no bits of detailing that you have to be bothered by and the added bonus is that it gives full access to the cab interior for fitting something like a crew if you so wish or if you want to put in a large stay alive then there is space at the bottom of the cab to be able to do this and it's relatively easy to run the wires through in the same track that the speaker wires go to the pre-fitted speaker in the bunker which also makes a sound installation really really easy to 
The firebox flicker effect as well was really, really nice, and it's great to see these kind of features being added to steam locomotives almost as standard these days. I also really like the fact that the firebox flicker had a kind of uh, red glow just between the rearmost axle and uh, it just gave that little bit of an effect uh, which was more akin to how you would expect a prototype locomotive to look. I'm not sure whether that's by accident or design but it certainly added to the effect. On DC running that firebox flicker was uh, turned on at a very very low voltage which means that DC users could also make fullest use of that too. So I'm going to give this a 9.8. On accuracy and quality of finish, well accuracy I've got every faith in this model. It's certainly one which captures the look and feel of this rather late class of pannier tanks and everything about this that I could see really did look and feel just like the pictures of the prototype. I really like this livery too, this somewhat unusual rendition with Dark Valley rather than Great Western on the pannier tanks. The only area again which had a little bit of concern on the finish was this little bit of a lean on the back of the bunker, uh, but we've covered that as well in one of the other areas of the score. So I'm going to give this a 9.4. The last category is value for money, and these models are available exclusively from Model Rail Offers, which is the online shop for Model Rail Magazine. A number of different liveries are still available at £149 each. Now this was a special commission and that does tend to mean that they command a little bit of a premium. Although it has been out for uh, over a year now and certainly whilst prices have definitely been moving in that direction it does feel that you really did pay a little bit of a premium for this at the time. That said, you get a smooth running model which does have features and it has a lot of weight to it as well. This is very much a premium model and the box also reflects that as well, showing a pride in the finished product. And I'm going to give this 8.0 and that gives us a very respectable total score of 46.4. All in all, this is a great model, and certainly as an earlier release from Rapido Trains, albeit in conjunction with Model Rail, it really is a great effort, and it bodes very well for future releases from Rapido, and I'm particularly looking forward to the 15XX Pannier tank locomotives that are forthcoming from them. I'd also like to extend a huge, huge thanks to Bo Minnick for very, very generously providing the channel with this model and giving us the opportunity to give it a good close look and scrutiny, and it will certainly take pride of place. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative and a big extra special thanks to Bo Minnick for very kindly sending this model in to the channel so that we could have a good close look at it. And we've got a link in the description box taking you to Model Rail Offers where you can buy your own version of this model from the liveries that are still available. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. What did you think about today's model? And is this something that maybe is on your radar? Are you now looking into getting one of these? Or indeed, have you already got one of these? I'd love to hear your experiences of this. And what are your favorite liveries of those that are available? Love to hear from you. Do leave a comment down below. You can also check us out over on Patreon and help support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. And we've got a number of different tiers of rewards to suit anybody's pocket. You've also got the full merchandise store as well and you can be resplendent in your Billy's replacement t-shirt, gronked up hoodie and so much more. Do please consider liking, sharing and also subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you next time. Until then, take care, happy modelling, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk
Additional support is provided by... This is Clark Railworks, and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains, and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers, and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models, and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO, or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Michael Rose, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.